What up, fans? My name's Brent Tim. This is Snack Chat Live, and welcome to Robot Morocco. I truly feel like a stranger in a strange land. This is my first time ever in North Africa, and it's my first time visiting a predominantly Muslim country as well. It's my belief that the best way to see a new country is not through Google Maps, it's not through a travel book, and it's certainly not through TripAdvisor. It's through the eyes of a local. So a few days before I arrived in Morocco, I posted a message to Reddit, seeing if any Moroccan locals want to take me on a journey around their city. Sure enough, I had a couple sweet souls respond. So today, it's a very special episode of Snack Chat Live. I'm meeting up with a total stranger from Reddit to take me around the city on a wild and wacky Moroccan food tour. All right, I just met up with my new friend, Ayoub. Say hey, Ayoub. Hi, got to meet you. We're about to go chow down on some breakfast at one of his favorite spots in the city. We're heading to a place called Mahalaba, which essentially translates into dairy place, somewhere you would get like yogurt, milk, things like that. All right, we're walking around trying to find a Mahalaba, but a lot of them are closed because it's Friday and it's a holy day. I'm gonna let my friend Ayub explain just what's going on. Jumu'ah is the equivalent of Sunday Mass. People often get to the mosque to pray once a week. It's a holiday because we eat couscous. We, the family gets together, we pray, we hear the, the, the Imam's speech. It's a big secret day. All right, the search for breakfast continues. We're in the middle of Rabat's Medina. And a Medina is essentially a city within a city. It's where you're gonna find a ton of shops, a bunch of food stalls, crazy vendors selling all sorts of things like spices, clothing, literally everything you wanna find in Rabat is in the Medina. After asking a few shop owners for help, Ayub was able to find us an open mahalaba and they were going to cook us up some araif especially for us. The bread for the araif is also known as mezamin and it's made from a semolina flour mix. Bread is sacred to the Moroccans and it's a vital part of every single meal. Okay, we found a place that has the arrive. Check this out. Cool. With emlo. Emlo. And what is that? The almond butter. It's the, 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 the sweet equivalent of uh, peanut butter. It's got almond butter on the inside. It's kind of like a Moroccan peanut butter. Yes. Like a jelly sandwich. Jelly, GP sandwich. Je peanut butter jelly sandwich. Yes. yes. Okay, okay. And then here we have traditional Moroccan yogurt. Right. <laughs> Oh. oh wow. Mm. We taste some olive oil and the honey. Ah, okay. This is really, really good. I'm definitely getting a very strong honey flavor from it. Very, very similar to peanut butter, like he said. This is insanely sweet. It's really, really savory too, with like the saltiness of the bread. Ooh, and some of that is dripping out. Moroccans really love to mix salty flavors with sweet flavors, and the araif right here is the embodiment of that. The honey butter melts really well with the salt, and the olive oil mixed in too just gives it a really, really savory flavor. Y'all, I'm really, really digging this. Absolutely a phenomenal breakfast snack. Great way to start the day. Thank you for the recommendation, Ayub. If you couldn't tell by the description, this breakfast is super calorie heavy. But the Moroccans need that to power through their days. So they need things that have a lot of starches, fats, proteins, everything you need to take yourself from breakfast to prayer to lunch. The total cost of all this together, less than $1 USD. Talk about a breakfast value. I wish you guys could taste the crispiness and the flavors on this arrive. Absolutely phenomenal. It reminds me of like a much more crispier crepe, especially with the flavors that I'm getting from the peanut butter and the olive oil. Oh, super rich, super, super good. I give the Araif 4.3 rocket ships. This is a phenomenal way to start the day. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna eat this every single morning from now until I leave Morocco. Cannot say enough good things about the Araif. Hello. Hello. And just to clarify, Araib, Araib. Arrive, arrive. 
All right, Ayub and I just finished a hearty and delicious breakfast. Thank you so much for helping organize that. Really, really impressive. Now we're heading to the local mosque for prayer. Guys, you've no idea how happy I am to have met Ayub. This guy has told me more about Moroccan culture in one hour than I've learned in my entire life. I really suggest you guys look into the history books, go onto Wikipedia, and find out more about this absolutely extraordinary country. Truly mind-blowing how big a place in history Morocco was played. Ayub and I are making our way to the site of the Hassan Tower. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and perhaps Rabat's most famous landmark. We are on the Hassan Square, with the Hassan Tower and the Hassan Mosque is there. And next to them, they are the grave of Muhammad V and Hassan II and Abdullah, the prince. It was built centuries ago to hold religion ceremonies. So this is the biggest and most popular mosque in all of Rabat, and what you're hearing is the Quran. <laughs> Okay, mass is done, and because it's Friday, a really holy day here in Morocco, everyone is heading to go get couscous with their friends and family. So Ayub, I guess that means it's time to go get some couscous? Of course. Okay, we're back in the Medina, and we found a really small sook, so we're gonna walk down here before we get some couscous see what we find. Fans, I'm gonna do an entire separate video on everything that goes down in the Medina. Just walking through this little sook, there's so many fruits, vegetables, herbs, spices, sweets, meats, clothing. They've got everything you could dream of here. Absolutely overwhelmed with how much stuff is here. Very affordable too, according to you. All right, Ayub has brought us to a pretty new mall, but because it's Friday, virtually everything is closed. But Ayub and his family here actually own a store, so we're about to go in and check that out. These garments are made from wood and leather. Yes, their purpose is to serve nuts. Also, we have stuff like this, where you can serve towels. It's made of leather and uh, wood. Very nice. We have also this piece of art. Its purpose is to serve remote controls, batteries, keys. Mm. Keys, house keys of, uh, for, for car, stuff like that. Also we have currants made from uh, leather and wood. Let's see those. Oh wow, really nice. Wow. We have all the shapes, all right. we have uh, mini shapes and mini colors. We have also this piece of garment for, for tissue. You make uh, the tissue inside it. Hey, Uru, can you tell us a little bit about the blankets that we're seeing? Yes, we have the blankets from Spain, from Germany, from China. Mini blankets, heavy blankets uh, and large. Especially for winter, since winter in Morocco is pretty cold. Wow, they're very, very soft, very heavy. Yes, it's approximately, approximately five kilos. Five kilos, wow, yes. that is a seriously heavy duty blanket. It's 10 pounds. Almost also the 11 pounds. I really like the colors. Yes. But also, also towels. And towels as well. Yes, a collection of towels. Big towel for your body, and torso, and a mid medium one for your, for your hair, and a small one for your face and hands. So a collection of towels. Yes. Pack. Wow. And the pride of our our shop is this uh, piece of garments. This, this tissue is is for tea ceremonies. Ah, this is the pride, and it's used for tea ceremonies. Yes. Great design and embroidery on there, really, yeah, really fancy. Great designs. This is called the Fez Broderie. The Fez Broderie? Yes, it's made from computer. Like wow. computer. Are those robes I'm seeing? Yes, yeah, bath robes. From Spain and Portugal. We have also pillows, uh, t Turkish bath robes. Luxury in a single shop. Luxury in a single shop. Very well said, Ayub. All right, Ayub, you've shown us all these gorgeous custom luxury goods. Tell us a little bit about the pricing. The prices are affordable. We have the best prices in the market. Best prices in the market? Yes. Other merchants uh, often charge uh, double of the price we are charging. Wow, almost charge double. Yes. So if you're looking for the best prices in Rabat, Morocco, on luxury goods like towels, bathrobes, really cool things to hold your nuts in, you got to come to Ayub's shop. Ayub, what is the name of the shop? Adayel Aras. There we go. 
in what they have So on Snapchat Live, I'm always fascinated by what new trends are taking over cities and countries. Here's a wild one. In Morocco, over the past year and a half, pomegranate juice has become incredibly popular. Ayub here has never tried pomegranate juice in his life, so today he's about to take his first ever sip of pomegranate juice. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh, it's so fresh. It's so good. Really, really sweet. Ayu, what do you think? I hate it. <laughs> Fair enough. What don't you like about it? Taste. Uh, do you find that it's too sweet or tart or sour? I don't know. He doesn't know. Ayub is not a fan of the pomegranate juice. I rather like it. It's really fresh. And I think I like it just because in the States, the pomegranate juice that you buy in a plastic bottle, First off, it's really, really expensive. Way too pricey for this broke backpacker budget. But here, it's got a really, really nice, insane sweetness to it. It almost tastes like they added sugar, but this came straight from the fruit. Y'all, I give the street pomegranate juice 4.1 waves. Okay, living life like a true Moroccan today. We had breakfast, we went to mosque for prayer. Now it's time to chow down on couscous. And we think we found a place that's serving up something really, really special. All right, we're at a place in the Medina called the Restaurant of Liberation. Check out this spread. Hey, what are we working with here? Couscous and the soup. It's called domarta. Domarta. Yum. Marca? Marca. I wish you guys could smell the aroma coming off of this. It is sauce made of chicken and onions. Ooh, so a sauce made of chicken and onions. I see some carrots in there. We've also got a nice little spicy chili pepper. And this chicken looks super big, really, really tender. All right, Ayub, I will let you do the honors. Thank you. Pour it up. So in Morocco, first we pour the soup over the couscous. Once we've eaten that, then it's time to eat the chicken and the vegetables. So couscous first, chicken and veggies after. Ah, okay. So Ayub just gave me a great tip. He said whenever you go to a restaurant in Morocco, always try to eat on the top floor. If you go outside or stay in the ground level, there's a very high chance that beggars are going to approach you and ask you for money or just in general harass you. Pro tip from a local. All right guys, it's time to take my first bite of Moroccan couscous. Mm. That is really, really good. It's got a very rich, aromatic taste to it. The couscous, very, very tender, really soft. I'm really digging in the soup broth here. It's not overly salty, but it's got just the right amount of salt in there. You can definitely tell it's a heavy vegetable base, very hearty. I feel like this would be great for like a very cold winter day. If you're trying to get over a cold, something like that. I would call this comfort food. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, very, very good comfort food. Okay, we keep finding new ingredients in the couscous. We found some chickpeas, and we found this gigantic piece of Moroccan pumpkin, which I guess is different than normal pumpkin. It's definitely pumpkin, but it's a lot less sweet than pumpkin you've had back in the United States or elsewhere. I'm actually picking up on kind of like the tangy, or almost like a sour flavor of this pumpkin. It's a mix of sweet and salt. A mix of sweet and salt, according to you. I would totally agree. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of this pumpkin. I think I prefer the sweet stuff from back home, but it is incredibly tender. You can tell it's been soaking in that broth for a while. I'm in love with the vegetables in here. The slices of carrot are gigantic. It's a really, really sweet carrot. It's got an awesome, nice, soft texture to it. Legit. So, Ayud, have you been to this restaurant before? No, my first time. First time? My father recommended it for me. His father recommended it. Kudos to your father. He gave us a great recommendation. You can tell it's a good restaurant because just from looking around, there's not a single tourist in here. Everybody is a local. Everybody's got a giant smile on their face. And the menu was gigantic. Besides the couscous, they had things like sandwiches, burgers, and everything here was really inexpensive. They had tea for like 40 cents USD. What were some of the other things you saw on the menu? Black tea for 50 cents. Black tea for 50 cents? Wow. 
We've got a ton of sodas too. It looks like they've got some desserts as well. And of course, just like everywhere else in Morocco, they've got coffee. Ayu just told me that in Morocco, people eat with the hand under their fork or under their spoon so they don't drop it on the floor. Is that a religious practice or is it just about cleanliness? Cultural. Cultural. It's fixed food. I like that idea because I never like to waste a bite, and this way if I drop it in my hand, I can scarf it right down. I dig that. Hand under the spoon or fork everywhere I go from now on. Okay, it's time to tear into the chicken thigh. It's so incredibly flavorful, fall off the bone tender. This is one of the most tender pieces of meat I've had during my entire 102 days on the other side of the world. Really, really digging it. Hey, what do you think of the chicken? Good. Mm. Tasty. Very tasty. It's got a good mix of white and dark meat in there. Nicely cooked. Nice, yeah. Nicely cooked. Cooked to perfection. It goes so, so well with the couscous and the vegetables. This is a very hearty and a very healthy meal, too. Between the chickpeas, the pumpkin, the carrots, and the chicken, this meal is absolutely protein-packed. While it does seem especially hearty and a little bit salty, I would consider this a very healthy meal and a great option if you're looking to stay fit on the road. The price was right, the taste was right, the company was right. Thank you. Really can't say enough about everything in here. It's got a great homey atmosphere to the restaurant. The craziest part, this entire gigantic meal that easily fed two people, I mean, we can barely finish this plate, was under $3 USD. The price is absolutely mind-blowing. I love it. I give the couscous with chicken at Restaurant Liberation 3.4 rocket chips. After an amazing day exploring Rabat, Ayub and I headed to the beach to watch the sunset and reflect on our newfound friendship. Check out that sunset. What an absolutely great way to close out a really fantastic day. I want to thank Ayub so much for showing me around the city, for teaching me so much about Moroccan culture, his religion, his beliefs, for showing me all the wonderful food, and giving me enough tips to survive the rest of my trip in Morocco, and truly enough memories to last a lifetime. Thank you, thank you so much, Ayub. My name is Brent Tim. This was Snack Chat Live in Rabat, Morocco, and we're saying ciao for now.